Welcome to this first code journey on Quantum Code. My name is Martin and today I present you my adventure through fractals. First, let's act as intelligent human beings and try to understand what a fractal is. In mathematics, a fractal is a self-similar subset of Euclidean space whose fractal them. Okay, never mind. All we need to know is this thing reproduce itself and it's looking kinda thick. <laughs> so I booted up Godot and started to search ways to draw fractals. To start simple, I used the draw function and boom, I had my first circle drawn on screen. Then I played around with parameters a bit. Anyway, let's move on to fractals. I used recursive functions to make my first ones. In one dimension and in two dimensions. I also did the same with lines to create cool trees. By the way, at this point, I switched from draw functions to line to the node. So I was able to add some post-processing glow effect and apply shaders as you'll see later. Afterwards, I created a bunch of fractals using Lindemeyer system. I was inspired by Kodak's awesome video on the subject, a link is in the description, I recommend you to check it out. Once I had the grammar functions and some actions to draw the result implemented, it was possible to create a variety of fractals giving an action, which is the really first actions of the fractals some rules to expand the fractal at each iteration and eventually a modification of the angle applied at each rotation. Sit back, relax and watch this with cool music. From there on, I wanted to try out a different type of fractal. My goal was to visualize the Mandelbrot set. The idea behind it is not that difficult. Let's consider a plane, like your screen for example. We can assign a value to each point depending on its position on each axis. Then we compute this sequence which at each step gives another point in the plane. For example, with this point, we have this sequence, which goes to zero. And with this point, the sequence will go really far away. So we say it trends to infinity. An interesting fact about this sequence is that if a point goes further than this ring, we can be sure that the sequence will tend to infinity. 
So we can take a point and compute the 1500 first values of the sequence and based on when the point goes further than the circle, we can assign a color to it. For example, the sequence for this point goes behind the ring at value number 5. So it will get this color. Great, now if we consider each pixel on the screen, we can compute its color. But this will take a lot of time, as it implies to compute 1920 times 1080 sequences, each up to 1500 values. This represents more than 3 billion operations. As explained in the Book of Shaders, the processor is good to compute complex things, but terrible at computing a bunch of smaller ones. You can visualize it as a big pipe, where only one task can enter at the time. What's needed is parallel processing. Many small pipes running in parallel. And we have this in the graphic processor unit, which is in your graphic card. In order to communicate with it, we will use a pixel shader. It is quite easy to do in Godot. I have created a new scene, added a color rect node, and attached a new shader as material. Then I wrote down some code, and here is the result. I think it looks really good, so I added a center point variable and a scale variable. As it is a shader, we can of course zoom on it without pixelization. So I added a script with a zoom and... Uh, it was slow, so I made this zoom exponential, which is a lot faster. This is looking crazy. Yo, what the f Okay, so uh, I searched on Google what was the issue. In fact, this is due to the precision of my variables and operations. Basically, we zoomed so much, the points here are so close, the computer thinks they are equal. I know it is possible to do even more and create some crazy zoom but I prefer to leave this out for the moment. If any of you intelligent guys want to suggest an improvement in the comments, you're welcome. to visualize the Julia set. It is almost the same, except it depends on the seed. I've set up a crazy gradient like so. And there we have it. If I change the seed, the whole set changes. This is crazily hypnotic. So this brings us to the end of this first code journey. All the articles and resources I used during this learning process are available in the description. And by supporting me on Patreon, you can get access to the full project and upcoming resources. A link is also available in the description. See you soon.